Wilbe has no restrainer. Because I'm, I, I look at this negative and I think the negative is actually quite um, quite dense and it probably shouldn't have any any uh, restrainers to make it more contrasty. We're going to set the timer here to... It's already had two minutes so we put three more on and do five minutes. Yeah, negative as well. Yeah, right? you can use it. You use it for... So, we're going to... Uh, Turn this out now. Now you can already see the image a little bit actually. The image is already there, formed. I mean, I put it into this developer that we warmed up a little bit. And mm -hmm. sometimes you bless yourself before, but since you can do it depending on what kind of images you print, um, I'm actually not that religious, but that light thing over there. No, 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 it's just fine, it's fine. So we're going to put it on and it immediately comes out. Yeah, and it's actually, I can already see it's too muddy um, because we killed all the whites in this, but now some people believe that you need to sit this for two minutes. I'm actually going to pour this out now. I'm going to do this a little bit more visible. This is way too dark. Too dark. The print has no life. Um, it looks... Bad. Now we're going to put it in this phosphoric acid. That takes out the remaining, oh, this one we can throw out. It, it would take about four or five minutes to clear in this uh, to, to really get, but I, I, I think right away we're going to do a wild estimate. Now it now becomes very technical or very, um, very scientific. We should now use change only one of the increments, right? Um, and now the question is, should we use, this is the question to, to decide, should we use a more, a more contrasty developer or should we use less time? Let's go with less time at first. I have a feeling that it should be a more contrasty developer, but let me see. Let's do it at three minutes. That's we get somewhat the same area. And... Probably a little weaker than sunlight, I, I, but it's a bit more reliable because, like I say, uh, when you print with sunlight, it's it's just you know you get a cloudy day. It may take longer if, uh, because the ultraviolet light takes longer to penetrate through the clouds. I do think we should probably at this point warm up uh, a more contrasty developer and try our next test on a more contrasty developer. Right. So we're going to pour this on again and see the image is there, but I can tell you this is very, very ugly. We're going to now right away go uh, to a lighter situation. It's a bit better, less time, and actually it's not bad, but I'm going to now go uh, into another direction. There's quite a bit of difference in these two prints. I can see this. Uh, this has a little bit more, uh, a little bit more highlight situation happening, but I think we should probably go to a different developer. We're going to the new Leah, because Leah's my wife. Well, let's only change one variable. I didn't write anything on the paper yet. Remind me to write on the paper, because later on we want to compare. So let's do this only three minutes as well. The new, new Leah in here. I actually should. But usually I do a two phosphoric acid bath and one uh, sodium sulfide. Sodium sulfide clears up all of the leftover unexposed parts of the negatives uh, to make sure that they don't continue exposing from normal daylight. So this is a much nicer print. Now, just for the fun of it, we will... I'm going to pour this in. Right? This developer looks pretty nice. Sometimes when they get very old, the developers, they get so muddy from particles that come out of the print that this is looking like uh, like sooty water. Uh, but right now, it's this is still fairly fairly good. It's maybe about six months old, uh, but it would never go bad, really. It's never losing its strength of any of that. So I'm going to do again the unprofessional thing and putting it, my hands into it. 
shortening my life probably by another week again. Um, now, if we wanted to dodge and burn things, that gets more more complicated again, which you can do also. We would have to cut a mask out of rubylith, something like this. We can cut out a, a, with an exacto knife a certain area that we then expose longer if we wanted to burn something in. Um, we hope not to have to do this. Um, our digital photography is that you can make, you can make it a, 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 an attribute that everything is perfect mm -hmm. every time. But, okay, has a little, some kind of little schnicky thing here, but it, yeah, it's gone. Um, so this is what it looks like without developing. And the idea is, of course, also you want to cover this very quickly with, uh, with the developer. This comes so instantly. Uh, and the reasons here, now you can see already why I would not like to show the, bla uh, the, the brush stroke in this, in this image, in a finished image, because this is a rather delicate image. Um, you know, I mean, we'll have to see how this dries down. Maybe this could do a little... Maybe we need to get a little bit more burning here, but maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe it'll be a nice image, but, but it'll be, I think the highlights will come out nice. The, the nice thing about platinum prints, although I see something wrong with it, we won't talk about it yet. Um, the nice thing about platinum is they're very subtle. They have a, a, a very large range of, of gray tones. Uh, more so than um, more so than a silver print, and that's why a platinum print. It's really hard to make them really super snappy and graphic. Uh, you 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 should look more for um, how should I say a more a more gentle, graduated uh, kind of tonality. Uh, it seems to have more more gray tones between the white and the black than than a silver print normally has.